here in Georgia this afternoon. Ready to go. This is 250 East. Just one heat per regional championship. Let's go here in Atlanta. Lawrence Glass out of the gates. The red bike, the Honda HRC machine on the inside. But he goes oh. down. The championship leader is down. Ah, he's got to get up. He's stuck underneath the bike. His foot's stuck. He has got a lot of ground to make up. He's got to hustle. This is a heat race. Coming up the inside, RJ Hampshire is going to close the door down. He initiates the turn, and as he leans the bike over, just slips down. It's all muddy. You can see him. He tucks in right there. Nervous at, probably scared. Didn't want to get hit by yeah. another rider. Man, his back is against the wall now to try to get to transfer position. So up front, Jace Owen aboard that Markov FXR. Club MX Yamaha's got off to a terrific start. So too is the 54 of Mitchell Oldenburg on that smart top Bullfrog Spars Moto Concepts Honda. He leads the way. Now we go back a little further and find bike 18, the Honda HRC, the factory rider. Jet Lawrence, who has very swiftly worked his way into a transfer position through that split lane, the first of two sand sections here on this Atlanta Motor Speedway track. Oh, comes up a little bit short on that triple jump right there. Awesome shot of that split lane sand section. Helen Park is on the 140, and Jet goes by him to now take over that ninth place, the ninth and final transfer position. So long as he stays aboard wow. his 250 Honda, there will be no LCQ for Jet Lawrence, the championship leader. Up front, Mitchell Oldenburg, RJ Hampshire, that's first and second. Seeing there through one of two whoop sections, and last weekend's winner is in the lead, Hampshire. Positivity breeds positivity. What a pass by RJ Hampshire, just gets to the back of the bike creating more forward bite from his rear tire, more grip. Gets a better drive through the whoops over Mitchell Oldenburg and takes the lead, but the number 33, Austin Forkner, boy, he's closing in the gap as well. Well, big picture for Jet Lawrence. Get this thing into the finish line, or the uh, main event. Uh, Forkner is all over it right here. Pretty interesting, I mean, Austin showing a lot of speed, comfortable, which is hard to do after not racing for four or five weeks. Battle for the lead in this East Coast heat. Coming back to racing full time. And Austin Faulkner goes from near the back of the pack to the lead, to the roar of the crowd, and takes the East Coast heat victory. Right at the line. Welcome back, Austin Faulkner. RJ Hampshire, Mitchell Oldenburg, Pierce Brown, and the championship leader comes in fifth from last. West Coast 250 heat, let's do it. Look at Joe Shimoda on the Monster Energy Kawasaki blasts out of the gates for a clear hole shot. Where's Christian Craig? He's on the inside. He's about third or fourth at the moment. Michael Mosman's in there. Yeah, those guys learned from the first heat race. They took it easy, braked a little bit easy, or braked a little bit sooner in anticipation of a wet first corner and slippery. That 33 main event laps has really had a lot of speed, working well on that. Troy Lee designs Red Bull gas gas machine. Look at. Here we go, change for the lead. The Red Bull gas gas, the Troy Lee design machine out in front. Here comes the 28 of Christian Craig. Well, he's not far back. Here we go, here we go. Hunter oh! Lawrence tags the back of Joe Shimoda, gets Shimoda off balance, and tucks up the inside. Uh, that was tough to do. Oh, race leader down, Michael Moseman. Off the gas, uh, gas, back on. I think that's right after the whoops. Let's see if he gets a little sideways on the whoops, and it's a it's a small little, like, a turn. Oh, he gets kicked just a little bit sideways. That's what happens. Boom, down he goes. And Christian Craig says, I'll take the lead yeah. on my way home. He'll see the white flag next. Bottom box is the race leader, Christian Craig. When we first saw the track yesterday on Media Day, we said, isn't this interesting? When they go over the, the bridge, the over and under, there's this big straight going to the finish jump. In case there's a close call, it might be interesting. No pressure on Christian Craig as he wins the West Coast one. But in the East Coast, heat, it was Austin Faulkner that used that drag strip right there to grab that victory. Christian Craig keeps it perfect. Seven heats this year, seven heat victories. Well done. 450, heat one, here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Anderson gets out really well, so too does Bogle. Bogle on the inside, but it's gonna be the Monster Energy Kawasaki rider in Jason Anderson. Do 
Suzuki Bogle's got some good starts over the last five or six races. He's got that Twisted T Suzuki HEP machine amped up. He certainly has been a good starter majority of his career. He once told me, he says, you give me a good bike, or a, I, he, he felt like he could pull a whole shot with a stock bike, and that's saying a lot against these finely tuned factory machines. He's just that confident in his ability of the starts. The last handful of races, Justin has been scoring, and scoring really well. Tomac was making a move on him there through the whoops, and is easily up into second place. Now here comes the 51, truly designed Red Bull gas gas of Justin Barsha, fighting for that third spot. Tomac wants this heat win, but he has been just grinding away and chipping into that lead of Jason Anderson. Yeah, and now it's on. Watch how slippery it is coming to this corner right here. They're ever getting in there ever so slightly, using their balance, waiting that outside foot peg on the end of that corner, trying to create as much grip. Here we go on the inside. The championship leader takes the lead to the roar of this crowd. Now Anderson's going to try to get back by him, cut back up underneath the inside, makes Great the cut. Work. Jason Anderson, yeah. all that monster energy, Kawasaki does not want to relinquish the lead and possibly a fifth heat victory for the season. Wow, that was a great counter attack or counter pass. He set Eli Tomac up perfectly, swung out wide, then went back. Oh, oh, oh. massive tank slapper from Tomac. I love the fight that Jason Anderson still, uh, still putting out there on the track with really how the last five races have gone. You know, he wants to forget about it, but man, he is not quitting. Oh! And Norris Tomac, that, not, that may have put pay to his chances. He was gaining really quickly on Anderson and tried to do what Anderson did to him in that same section. Finishing the bridge, this stretch to the finish jump. Jason Anderson of all the works, Kawasaki, victorious. In a heat for the fifth time this year over Eli Tomac and Justin Barsha will come home third as well. The reigning series champion is back, Cooper Webb's in this one. Heat two of the 450s. Who gets the jump? Justin Brighton gets a flyer aboard the 10. Sexton on the inside of Marvin Muskan. Does he stay on? He does. But look at this. It is the 26 of Alex Martin aboard his muck-off FXR Club MX Yamaha. Brilliant start. Well, he's pretty light, and that's a lot of horsepower on that 450. Thank you, Liam. Red Bull KTM informed me earlier that Webb is in good shape. Obviously, he's back racing, so there's a reason for that. But they said they did testing in Florida this week, had a couple of days on the track. They said they found some good stuff on the bike for comfort, for Cooper. And they said, yeah, maybe he's not 100% because he's had a lot of injuries. You see him pass Alex Martin there. But they said, you know, he's as close as he possibly can be. And we know these riders, they don't need to be 100%, right, Ricky? Even if it's just a couple of little clicks off there physically, they're able to dig deep on race day. And he won here last year year so battle for the lead we spoke about chase sexton's speed and look at this through the whoops cooper webb takes a look over at the honda rider as he goes flashing by how about the difference in whoop speed i think chase just goes blowing by the defending champion cooper webb so in a heat, is it better to be like this where you can work on things in a no pressure situation? You got nearly nine seconds advantage, you're on your way home, yeah. you're gonna win this, or is it better being in a battle? Yeah, I think in this area he'll he'll be able to dissect the track. He'll be able to dissect his bike as well. Heat winner, Chase Sexton on the Honda HRC factory bike. Great victory, and easily so. There was no immediate pressure from Cooper Webb who just kind of got off and cruised home. Got off the, the gas, so to speak. He'll grab second, Malcolm Stewart for third, and Marvin Muskan comes across that finish jump in fourth. But well done, fastest qualifier and Heat 2 winner. We do have an update from the Heat. We saw that terrible crash by Phil Nicoletti. He has broken his arm, will take no further part. 250 LCQ here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Let's go for the top four to go through to the highly anticipated and really exciting East-West Shootout. Derek Drake got a really good start on the 331, the Barak Suzuki through the tunnel, ahead of the pack. Slippery there, Hardy Munoz is second. Top six in this race, all riders from that East Coast division, so a little early flex right now for these guys. Well, and Daniel, I want to talk to you. I mean, think about that. Joe, oh, 
there you go. Welton goes down, but think about Jordan Smith. I mean, he has three 250 wins, main event wins, and he had it at one stage in this race. There's just a time where he was probably going to pack this thing in and go to the house. Big box, you're watching Chris Blows, the veteran, work on Cullen Park, but both are in transfer positions, so as long as they stay where they are on this final lap, all will be good, and they get to go to the big show. However, somebody is down there, who is just on the entrance to the tunnel. Well, and if you're Chris Blows, I mean, this guy's a seasoned veteran of racing, been racing a long time. He knows that there's no, nothing really to gain here by pushing the issue to get by Park. Oh, but he looks back. Munoz is right there. He just needs to hold position. Bottom box, the Barak Suzuki of Lake Elsinore, California's Derek Drake. Second career last chance qualifying victory. Well done. That was comprehensive. A long way out in front. Oh, that was Jordan Smith who, who uh, went oh, no. down. Yep, he right there from second position. Smith goes out, Cullen Park, Chris Blows, and Hardy Munoz will get the fourth and final transfer position. What a shame for Jordan Smith on that final lap. Ready to go, 450 last chance qualifier. This is it, last shot at getting to the main here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Good, the 72 of John Short got away to a really nice start, and so too did Brendan Scherer on the muck off FXR Yamaha. Scherer leads. There you go, I thought Short had it, and then Scherer comes out around that outside. 722 of Adam Entignap is nicely in the third on that Twisted T HEP Suzuki. So he's in a transfer spot early, but a long way to go. Adam Entignap ready to make a move here, or he can't because Benny Bloss has made the move as he holds on to second. John Short, who won the 450 LCQ, by the way, when we were in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest three weeks ago, would like to do the same again, but Benny Bloss has been the biggest yes. mover in this race. Really good work. Up into second, consolidating that transfer uh, position. Sharon's not done with. Look on the inside there, the white oh. boys on their next Yamaha. And closes the door, like we talked about, those 45 degree angle corners, they narrow up so fast. Can trying to make his first 450 oh, main. Look now Entignap is under pressure. Oh, oh he, Entignap leaves the bike over. I thought he was gonna lose it. Entignap's gotta get a good run through these whoops and maintain his position, and he does. Good stuff. That's gonna lock him in. This is the final lap, they're coming to the line. John Short's gonna do it just like he did in Seattle. Benny Bloss will get second. Adam Entignap holds up for third, and Hand makes his first 450 main. Ah, he's pumped. Well done. It's time to bring the action here in Atlanta. East-West 250 showdown, it's on. Who gets the jump? Lawrence got out really well, it's Hunter Lawrence and his younger brother. Around the outside goes off to, goes Joe Shimoda. Shimoda aboard the Kawasaki. Leads them down this first rhythm section. Well, a lot like we saw in the heat race. The start worked out for Jet Lawrence and Christian Craig. They faded to the outside. Thought it was gonna be a lot more worse of an outcome, but they're right up there in the mix as well. So to his RJ Hampshire on the 24. Second bike in. Hunter Lawrence is making an inside move on him. Successfully so. So Shimoda, Hunter Lawrence, RJ Hampshire, Jet Lawrence. Where is Christian Craig in this mix? Great first lap, Joe Shimoda. Look at this fight for second. Hunter Lawrence trying to set up Hampshire, he's down. Well, we talked about how slippery that corner was all day long. It is like ice. Imagine driving your car on ice and hitting the brakes. RJ Hampshire hits his rear brake. Boom, loses grip. Oh, look at Christian Craig trying to get by Forkner up the inside of that sand on the bottom of your screen. Joe Shimoda, Hunter Lawrence, and Jet Lawrence. Three guys. Oh, Jet Lawrence is down. Front end tucked under. The East Coast Championship leader goes to ground. So the two guys fighting in the East Coast Championship, RJ Hampshire and Jet Lawrence, have both fallen early on. This is what happened to Jet Lawrence. Oh, uh, he loses grip, going through the whoops, and he wheelies. Look how he adjusts his motorcycle. But then his front tire hits the whoops, and it like his, his front end darts out to the right, loses grip, deflects off the last whoop, and throws him down. Be proud of 
what you've been able to accomplish with your two boys and how well they ride, how well they carry themselves. And I think it's a moment for him to enjoy himself as well with the sacrifices of him and his wife made. Here we go. This is for the lead in this East-West showdown. Hunter Lawrence aboard the factory Honda takes the top spot over Joe Shimoda, his good friend Joe Shimoda. These guys are managed by the same agent. They play golf together. And now, Hunter sees himself in the lead, but Christian Craig is not far back. Now nah, he's right there in tow. That's right, he's got a lot to race for right now. Again, this is west, west, west. One, two, three. <laughs> and Hunter Lawrence is second in championship points to Christian Craig. And he is still, wow, look at that move right there, like Craig got top end speed. But now it's one on one. Lawrence and Craig, not the Lawrence we thought, but this is the fight for the 250 West Championship, Ricky. And if Christian wants to clinch this race around early, he does need a little bit more space on Hunter Lawrence. So sitting behind him right now, that's not a good thing. He's got to get by the 96 if he wants a shot at clinching it in Denver in two weeks. A lot of racing left here, Lee. A lot of racing left. These two, the top two in the race, are the top two in the West Coast Championship, but it's Christian Craig who leads Hunter Lawrence in the points. It would have been a lot closer uh, if not for some misfortune fortune for Hunter in Anaheim 3. That was a couple of laps ago. Just being told, here comes Jen Lawrence through the outside lane. Whoa! Faulkner closed the gap a little bit. These two, they've already had one mid-air collision this year. That was almost the second. Who's better through the whoops? Blast by! Jen Lawrence made quick work of Austin Faulkner there. I, I cannot tell you just how, how amazing that was of a pass. I mean, Austin Forkner is a bad dude on a motorcycle. For Jet Lauren to just start behind him, pass him, and overtake him before the end of the whoops, that is incredible. Up front, his brother, his older brother, has more than five seconds on Christian Craig to get his first win in an East-West showdown. He's been on the podium before in an East-West showdown, never a win. Wheeling through the sand section is Jet Lawrence. Gotta be smart here, though, if you're if you're Jet Lawrence, I know you want to be on that podium with your brother, but big picture, keep that in mind. Crowd cheering for this reason. Lawrence has come from 15th to 3rd. Well, I was going to say, keep an eye on him through the whoops there. He's taking up a lot of time. That's a great passing zone. And I believe that's where he was able to get by. Oh, look at Joe. Joe Shimoda tries to block oh. up. Pushes Jet Lawrence out. Look at they're playing up. Oh, Joe's going to get back the inside. These guys know each other and know each other well, but this is for the final step on the podium in an East-West showdown. That's over now. As I, I was going to tell, keep it clean, Joe. These guys going for championships. And Hunter Lawrence just has a couple of obstacles to clear, and it's going to be a victory. It's going to be a really sweet victory in Atlanta. Hunter Lawrence wins the East-West showdown and shootout. But the comeback ride was incredible by Jim Lawrence. He's going to stand on the podium with his brother, flanking Christian Craig. The Lawrence boys go 1-3. Christian Craig gets second. And there's some brotherly love. Only four races left in this Monster Energy AMA Supercross season. Ready to go here in Atlanta. Great start, Justin Barsha, Chase Sexton on the inside, Tomax there, so too Muskan. Who's got the inside run? Barsha and Sexton. The Gas Gas Rider leads the pack. Daniel just said it would be huge. Oh, oh Daniel Marvin Muskan. The St. Louis winner from a week ago hits the deck hard. Is he like Tomac? Was a lot closer to the race leader uh, just a couple of laps ago, and he's kind of fallen back. Yeah. Cooper Webb got by, Webb's taken off. Well, and, and he kind of did the same thing. Oh, oh. no! A sixth and the race leader is down. What happened? I wonder if he got a little sideways just because he doesn't have his visor on. All right, he jumps in, everything's good. Now you can get wobbly right here. Oh, yep, just leans out. Ooh. I think it's stuck under the bike. Yeah, it gets stuck under the bike. Yeah, he leans the bike over. Just, just falls down. Probably thought that there was more grip on the track, and you listen to Jet Lawrence. Jet Lawrence said that this dirt here is deceiving. So let's watch Sexton's comeback. 
He's in six, eight and a half seconds behind this man here. Let's see what he can do. Justin Barsha just had a hiccup and yeah. has lost several positions. Little slip up. Let's see if Eli Tomac was able to make some passes in his heat race there. That inside line through the sand. Left side of your screen. This will tell us what oh, happened to Barsha. Tips over. Similar to Sexton. Well, and it's really slippery right there. We've been talking about it all night. I mean, Bear, you just ever so slightly get the braking wrong and you're down. By the way, Marvin Muskan, as Tomac puts the pressure on Muskan's teammate, Marv has made his way back up. Look at this, Tomac around the outside of Webb to the roar of the crowd. The championship leader moves into second. That now puts pressure on Webb with a storming Sexton. What a pass by Eli Tomac. That is really hard to do to make that kind of pass. And if Eli Tomac can't beat Jason Anderson, the closest guy to him in the championship, the best he can do is be where he's at to minimize the points lost. Because as it stands right now, Eli boasts a two race win advantage. He's got 53 points. Here's Sexton on Cooper Webb for that last spot on the podium. Good comeback. Launching it out. I'm wondering if Sexton's gonna be able to catch him catch Eli he is on a mission right now so on their way home final lap just under a mile before the checkered flag flies for Monster Energy Kawasaki's Jason Anderson it would be his fourth win on the season 11th career win and he is just having fun out front that's exactly what Chase Sexton by the way told uh, Will earlier I think this might be the most fun I've had on my dirt bike so he's ridden his way onto the podium can he catch Eli Tomac? Well, this is fantastic right here to see Jason Anderson and that Monster Energy Kawasaki team back where they kind of started before we were in Detroit. I love, I love seeing this, and we haven't talked about him much since he took the lead early on in this main event, but that's a good kind of not talking about you compared to the last few weeks when he's been in a slump, so really happy. Look at the emotion. <laughs> that is so great to see, and for him to stick with it, keep grinding, even though he's way far in the rear as compared to where he was in the championship. Yeah. I, appreciate, I appreciate the drive and to keep pushing on. It'll be a 53-point championship difference heading to Foxborough, Massachusetts next week for another afternoon race. Final couple of jumps for Jason Anderson. He's won at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta. Now Jason Anderson wins at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Puts himself back on top of the podium. Fourth win of the year. Championship leader Eli Tomac second, and Chase Sexton with the comeback ride of the race for third. It's burnout time. There you go. Love it. <laughs> Look at the fans. Hi, I'm Will Christian, and thank you all so much for watching. I'm here to remind you to hit subscribe for all the latest Supercross news and highlights. And of course, don't forget to sign up for Peacock Premium. That is now the new home for streaming for all live Supercross events all season long.